really got to stop doing that in the intro of these videos. I just really, really, really miss having a, uh, a tuned truck, you know? It's just, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. But what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Fresh pair of shades on. Fresh, disgustingly dirty looking mustache. And by the way, Hunter, your pair of sunglasses are on the way. Thank you for uh, entering the comment contest. The old Denali here is getting, uh, it's getting pretty dirty. I know a lot of you guys have, uh, a lot of you guys said, oh, is that rubber? I see rubber on the back, uh, behind your tires in a lot of my Instagram pictures. And unfortunately, it's not. I'm not sitting there doing burnouts or any of that with the truck. Um, my detailer just put a ton of tire shine, as you can see. Tire shot all over this damn thing. Uh, and the one thing I kind of miss about having bigger tires or actually just being off the ground, and I know that uh, that seems weird to you guys, is that surprisingly you get less shit thrown on the truck. Now I know for whatever reason that's just counterintuitive. You know, you got bigger tires, they stick out further, but I think it has something to do with being lower to the ground that it just collects so much crap. I mean, the truck's filthy. But anyways, we are on our way to the bank because we need to get out some cash for the Work For It giveaway. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys that have entered. And we had a little bit less entries this time. Oh, easy killer, easy. Uh, had a bit fewer entries this time, and I understand it's the holidays, everybody's, you know, gotta prioritize a little bit more money. Um, and that's cool, but that just means more money for the guys that entered, because I'm not gonna lower the amount of money for the giveaway just because less people entered. So, for all you guys that entered, good luck. So I've always been curious as to how a bank would react to me going in there filming, but I think it's just really a bad idea. Um, Number one, for like personal reasons, nobody in there wants to be filmed. Anyways, but this bank here, uh, I've been coming here for years, and apparently it's been robbed more than any bank that I've ever heard of. So they installed this like metal detector box on the front of the building, so you basically get locked in this room until you walk through the metal detector and get cleared. Um, which pretty much means this giant metal camera is gonna set it off and I'm gonna be stuck locked in this box until somebody comes and uh, presses the button to let me out. So with that being said, let's try something. Ready? And here we go. I don't think you realize how underwhelming 100 fives is, especially when the bank gives you some like super dirty crinkled up ones and then drug dealer style puts a rubber band on it. So being that there's a lot less orders this time, I figured, uh, you know, spreading the boxes out in the giant room is just gonna look weird. Uh, and it just so happens to be almost the perfect truckload amount of orders. So I decided let's do the giveaway in the bed of the truck. Now, you know, right now it's not too windy. Hopefully it stays that way. Um, I doubt it. Every time I want to do something, the wind really seems to love to pick up. But thankfully there is no construction going on in the neighborhood today, so we can actually film outside. Now the one thing I'm hoping doesn't happen is that if the wind blows in from this way, there is a storm drain right there that I should probably take the time to put something in front of. That way the money doesn't go down there if it blows away, but we're not gonna do that. So let's jump right into this. Uh -huh. These are stuck together. It's not working as planned. Go in the boxes, go in the boxes. There. All right, so fresh crispy ones were a bad idea. Maybe it's a good thing they gave me these busted ass fives that'll uh, actually fly out of my hand a little bit better here. There we go. Looks like y'all made out uh, pretty well. You know, I really want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity and the platform to give back to you guys in, you know, one of many ways. Uh, I really, really, really do appreciate it. And all you guys that place orders, I appreciate that. Everybody that watches this channel, I appreciate that. Let's jump into the real topic of today's video. Um, I don't know if the license plate or at least the temporary tag on this truck was exposed at all during this giveaway, but if it was, it was probably censored. And there's good reason for that. And that kind of ties in with why you clicked on this video and the title and the thumbnail and all that. You know, I get told by people all the time I should put personalized plates on the truck. Um, you guys have come up with some pretty creative names uh, or plates to put on the truck. and. You know, California, right. we don't have like some of the coolest plates. I know Arizona, when we were over there picking up the truck, I saw that you guys have the, uh, like it's like a gray and black um, American flag with a thin blue line and the thin red line in it. Like you guys got some sick plates over there. And um, I'm not just talking the background of the plates. Though. I'm talking also the actual text of the plate. And like I said, I know there's a lot of good ones out there. I've seen some creative ones. I know when you submit something to the state, you kind of have to, uh, if it's going to be a little bit vulgar, you got to like kind of play around with using letters and numbers and all that shit to, uh, to kind of pass it through. But the main reason I don't have personalized plates on the trucks or either of my trucks is uh, it's identification reasons. Now, I'm sure you're saying if you're doing nothing wrong, what are you worried about? But it kind of plays into more than just that. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to say this, and don't worry. I know it's going to sound a little conspiracy theory-ish. So, let's go ahead and put on the old tinfoil hat for this one. 
So let's just assume we are all upstanding citizens with the law, nobody's on the run from the law, as most of us truly are. Um, so what are you going to have to worry about being identified wise? Well, let's say you have some kind of person who maliciously wants to harm you or a crazy ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend that wants to stalk you. You know, somebody that's been casing your house, wants to follow you while you're away, the radio and back to the guy that's breaking into your house. That way they know when you're coming home. There's really a lot of reasons that people would maliciously want to follow you. Now, so long as you have a stockish vehicle, no identifying markers on your vehicle, like a big decal on it or anything like that, the standard state issued license plate in the standard color is gonna be really, really hard to track unless they specifically made a mental note to keep an eye on it. Um, if it's just something that says like booger, in like a different color than the standard issue state one, that's gonna be really easy for them to figure out and find. And if you guys just think I'm talking out of my ass, let me tell you guys a quick story on how I was able to use somebody's personalized plates to identify them for uh, some vandalism they had done to one of my vehicles. So about two years ago, I was, uh, I was building a restaurant, working on a project. Our restaurant had its own loading zone in front of the building. Uh, me and Dave, you guys have seen in my other videos, we had been parking in the loading zone while we were working there. The restaurant was closed, it was no big deal. Um, and so, you know, we were doing our thing. We had been there for maybe two, three months. Well, apparently somebody in the neighborhood really took offense to that. And he decided he was gonna call the meter maid on us one day. Meter maid shows up, says, hey, you know, um, if you guys don't mind moving, well, while the meter maid's talking to my buddy Dave, this guy comes running up like he wants to fight Dave saying, yeah, now you're in trouble. Move your vehicles. Meter maid's going to ticket you. Um, long story short, the meter maid felt so bad for us that this guy was just a nut job. And by the way, he was in his like 60s. Uh, this guy was such a nut job that totally didn't give us a ticket. Just said, yeah, you know, if you guys can move, cool. Like, take your time. So anyway, from that day forward, that's, this guy was so pissed, he kind of had a personal vendetta against me and Dave. So he had a few confrontations with Dave. And over the next like two weeks, I would say, it kind of started getting worse and worse and worse and worse, where he would literally go out of his way every single day to kind of mess with us in some way, shape or form. So of course, me being me, I decided, you know what, I've had enough of this shit. I had my other Chevy. It was, uh, you know, there might've been parts of the exhaust that fell off. So it would pump out pretty much straight diesel fumes. Um, so he would hang out at this bar every single day and the bar had a little bit of like patio space that was right on the sidewalk, pretty much right next to the exhaust of my truck where I parked every day. Well, I had finally had enough of this guy, so I decided my truck needs to warm up a little bit extra longer today. So I fire up the truck, letting it idle while I'm loading up tools, and he comes over and he's like, you need to shut this fucking truck off, uh, take it down the street, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, look, dude, it's a diesel. It's got to warm up. He's like, well, make it warm up down the street. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not going to move until it warms up. So, you know, we had a little bit of words, no big deal. And then he went inside the bar. Now, fast forward a couple days later, and I'm loading up my tools. Hadn't started the truck yet. And now he's talking shit. While he's sitting at the seat at the bar, he's yelling across the way, talking more shit to us. Um, and I just laugh at him. Whatever. Let it go. You know, this is your life, old man. Cool. Live it. Well, then he gets in another confrontation with Dave. And some stuff goes down, and then he kind of disappears. So, now mind you, this guy rode his bike to the bar every single day. He wore one of those um, Lance Armstrong kind of suits. And uh, so he rode his bike to the bar every single day. So on this particular day that the event went down, I look over and I notice he's not wearing his Lance Armstrong, you know, live strong suit. He's just uh, sitting at the bar in normal clothes. I think, all right, whatever, no big deal. Um, I start to go towards my truck to load some shit in. And all of a sudden he starts to get real weird. Then he starts walking over to his car. Now his car is parked in the loading zone that he hates anybody parking in. Um, but I had never seen his vehicle prior to that. So he goes to get in his car and I'm like, you know what? Something's really weird about this guy. He's looking at me funny. He keeps looking back at me, looking back at me. Something's weird. So I decided to snap a picture of him, you know, just whatever. I snapped a picture of him next to his car. He didn't even see me do it. And I'm thinking, all right, whatever. He's like something happened today. I don't know what, but something happened. So I go to get in my truck and I head home. Didn't really notice anything out of place. So I get home. Second I get out of my truck, I go to close the door and all of a sudden I notice there is a key mark from about here all the way down this door. Now, this guy was so weak he couldn't even get into the, uh, the primer. It was just pretty much through the clear coat, which is why I didn't really notice it because it was still kind of white underneath. Um, but instantly I knew he had done it. Um, but now here comes the burden of proof, right? You can sit there and think who did it all day long. Um, obviously this guy did it, but you need the burden of proof. So of course there's a million cameras over in that area, right? I mean, it's just, that's what it is. It's a bar, there's two bars next door. Um, both bar owners. Now I swear license plates come into play in this story guys. So hold out for me, hold out for me. So um, obviously we saw him doing it on camera, which is great. Uh, but now you gotta identify the guy, right? Which is gonna be tough, because what do you have? So I start scrolling through the picture. Yeah, I've got a picture of him, that's great. But then all of a sudden I notice his license plate. It's a, it's a personalized plate and it's got a name on it, right? 
So I look at it, and it looks kind of like a business name. So I Google it, and sure enough, his business name was his personalized license plate. And in through Googling his business, when you have a public business like that, pretty much all of your information is out there. So literally from that one picture of his license plate, I was able to get enough information to go ahead and go towards the police and present them with all this. Here's the guy, here's him doing it, and here's his information. Did all the work for him, made it a, such a clean, easy, dry case. If he had not had that personalized license plate, I would have no clue who this guy is. So while personalized plates look cool, I mean, you kinda gotta factor in the risk reward factor of it. Um, now being that, you know, as a YouTuber, Instagrammer, and I know a lot of us in the industry, or I guess I don't even know if it's called the industry, whatever, a lot of us that do this feel the same, and everybody feels the need that we don't want our license plates in any pictures or any videos. So it takes a lot of work to sit there and censor every single picture or every single video. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen some of my videos of the Ford, because the Ford's the only vehicle I have that has the actual license plate on it, but it's only got it in the back. As you can see, it doesn't have it in the front, and there's a very good reason for that not being in the front. I bought it that way. Um, anyways, and I'm sure you guys are saying, well, why do you guys take the time to censor those license plates? Um, most people can't pull up an address or can't pull up information through a license plate. But a lot of you guys out there are very craft. And while the vast majority of you guys are great intentioned, um, there's always that crazy nut job out there that wants to find out your information for whatever kind of malicious reasons. So that's the reason you don't see my family, that's the reason you don't see my girlfriend in these videos, um, that's the reason you don't see house addresses, you don't see the front of the house too often. Uh, you know, I've seen some of the comments where everybody says you live next to Faze Rug just based on like a quick little glimpse of like a quarter of the house, which by the way, I don't live next to Faze Rug. Um, didn't even know who that guy was until I Googled him, thanks to you guys. But I don't live next to him, but you guys were able to get close. I mean, just by looking at a quick little image of the neighborhood. You know, it really is risky putting all your stuff out there, so you really have to be careful on how you do it. And one of the biggest questions I got asked way back in the day was, you still don't have license plates on that vehicle? And for this reason, it's such a pain to sit there and censor every single shot. Um, fun fact for you guys real quick, the TV show Cops, everybody that's on there that is uncensored has signed a consent form. And they've pretty much said, if you won't sign that consent form, whatever happened on that clip is pretty much not gonna air. Um, so that whole encounter could not air and they could miss some gold because they don't want to put in the time or the effort to have to censor your face throughout that entire whatever five minute segment because it is a pain in the butt. I'm sure the pros are way better and way faster at it than me, but it really is a pain. So, I mean, just something to keep in mind, like those guys that get caught on cops, like dressed up as chicks or like the guy that got caught picking up a hooker who turned out to be a dude like those guys consented for that to be on TV which is nuts so I think that as long as I'll be filming these YouTube videos and kind of staying in the social media world I'm not gonna have plates on this truck which I know is gonna sound crazy to you guys but check this out prior to even being on Instagram or prior to Instagram even being a thing um, on my very first truck which was a 05 1500 lifted all that I went 10 years 10 years guys with no license plates on the truck because I thought they were ugly. I mean, there was no social media reason. There was no posting pictures of it reason. I specifically just thought they were ugly. Um, and I liked Preston's paper plates better. I thought it just looked cleaner. They were black, it looked better on the truck. California didn't offer black plates at the time. Now that doesn't mean I'm some low life who doesn't pay my absurdly high California registration fees. I definitely do that. I have the license plates. I always carry them on me in case I ever get pulled over. Um, you know, when the officer asks for my registration, I hand in my registration as well as one of the license plates. Um, you know, because there have been times where I've had plates on trucks, had to take them off for truck shows, all that. So you do kind of forget to put them back on from time to time. And speaking of registration fees, I'm just really curious, and I probably don't even want to ask this question because I'm really going to hate California for this. But what are the registration fees where you live? Put it down in the comments because I'll tell you right now, it was about 900 bucks to register this truck and it keeps going up with this stupid new gas tax and all that crap that they just passed. And before somebody says it, I know guys, once this truck is lifted as the BBB, the bigger, better, better build, obviously it's going to be highly highly identifiable so no there's not going to be any hiding from law enforcement there's not going to be any you know running from whoever if they're going to want to be able to spot me they're going to spot me in this vehicle which is fine and that's not the reason i'm doing it the reason i won't have personalized plates is for the weird nut job on the internet that wants to try and pull up personal information off of those plates you know having a big identifiable vehicle is a. Uh, you know, it's, it's got its ups and downs. Everybody that I've ever had come up to me or want to meet me from the channel or any of that has been awesome. Super, super pleasant and great. But I know some of these YouTubers that live in smaller towns where obviously they get noticed a lot more often, people drive by their house, um, all that kind of shit. It, it can get a little bit sketchy and a little bit creepy sometimes. But I really, really do want to thank everybody that has come up to me and said, hey, we watch your channel, we love your videos, all that. Everybody's been super, super awesome. Um, and I really do love like talking to you guys, interacting with you guys, taking pictures, all that stuff. I mean, it blows my 
mind that anybody even wants a picture with me. I'm sure they're not going to want it with this ugly mustache anymore. But um, it really is a cool experience, and I wish everybody can experience that at some point. Now, that being said, I mean, I have had one guy just like, I'm standing there, and he kind of comes up behind me. He's like, hey, I watch all your videos. I'm like, oh. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Every once in a while, you get like one that's a little bit strange, but for the vast majority of you guys, you guys are super awesome, and I love meeting you guys. And with that, guys, I say we wrap up this video. I want to thank everybody that entered the Work Forward Apparel giveaway. If you uh, want to be entered into the next giveaway, keep an eye out when we hit big milestones on the channel. We do a big giveaway. Don't forget to check out WorkForwardApparel.com. Um, if you have not clicked the subscribe button, please do so now so you can keep up with the BBB, the bigger, better, better build back here on the Denali. Uh, I think we got some great ideas. I want to thank everybody that sent in color schemes, color ideas for the new lift kit. Uh, you know, we got a lot of big things planned for this truck. And while we're at it, if you'd be so kind, please give this video a like, aka a thumbs up. We've got a lot of crazy fires going on in California right now, so don't forget to go out there and thank a first responder, police, fire, uh, military, all that stuff. They've been doing incredible jobs here in California to fight these fires. So thanks, guys. You're the best. Catch you in the next video. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah.